Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to break down a Euro USD trade for you guys today. Um, it's a trade that yielded almost 3.4 R. I sent it out to our signals group. I'm going to show you guys everything from top down, right from the daily down to the one minute. Um, just before I get going, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, um, right off the bat, I want to show you guys here. We took out a previous month slow. If we look at the detail here on the daily, there is no body close through this. Um, so that can signal that this level is possibly holding. Um, now the market moves uh, two ways. Um, in a liquidity market, it'll move. It'll basically wipe the highs, wipe the lows, and kind of go sideways. This is kind of a bearish liquidity market where it's kind of pushing down. So it's going to do one of two things. Price is either coming up here to get internal liquidity and continue down. Or price is going to take out the induced high. Um, the reason this high is induced is it is the last supply zone, you would say, that broke structure. Um, it doesn't look like it on a daily, but on another time frame, this would be considered a structure break. So as of right now, it's hard to say if it's going to come and take the daily induced high out or not. But uh, I'm going to break this down for you guys on the lower time frame. So I trade New York um, right off the bat. So the day before we took out this previous month's low. And you guys can see we got a reaction from it. Um, this right here, um, this is the previous day's low got swept as well. A lot of times the initial reactions got swept. Now what's important here is um, Euro took this out. DXY actually never took this point out. So we actually had a DXY divergence right off the bat here. Um, in the same way I showed you guys this daily highs induced, uh, we have the same scenario here on the one hour. This high is induced. It's the last supply that broke structure. Um, a lot of people will try a continuation model. So it is a really good place for the algo to look for liquidity. Um, now I'm going to explain all these as we go through. I'm just going to kind of play on the 5 and the 15 minute and show you guys what I was looking at. Um, at this point, I knew there was a good probability that the market could go up. However, I don't want to be the guy finding bottom in case this gets reswept a couple of times. So what I like to see is momentum candles. Um, I prefer to see at least three of them in a row without a break, basically. So like you have momentum candles here, but they weren't all momentum candles in a row. You can kind of see we broke the chain here. This could be possible liquidity. So this isn't a clean break. Um, it's not what I like to see. It's not part of my plan. I'm going to explain the OTZ and the LIT as we get to it here. So in this case here, these are actually proper momentum candles. So I got three in a row here. Um, there's no break a chain. When I mean break a chain, I mean we didn't uh, violate the previous candle before. So this kind of shows there's bullish strength in the market. So you guys can see the difference here where this candle doesn't violate the second candle. The second candle doesn't violate the low of the third candle. It's very different than what we have here. Here, uh, we start out with momentum. We kind of break the chain. Um, this candle fails to break this candle. Goes up again, looks like it's going to gain momentum, but then price pulls back and actually creates liquidity to be taken out. Um, so that's why when this chain gets broken, um, I don't like to see that. Uh, I like to see these candles in a row. So we got three momentum candles in a row. Um, OTZ is our order transfer zone. So for me, it's the last sell range on the lower time frame. So this high took out this low, which also induces this high and its liquidity. So at this point, one of two things could happen. Um, price could continue selling, possibly make another low, or price shows us that it wants to go down. Um, truth be told, I actually sold this on the one minute and I broke even really quick because I wasn't sure if it's going to reverse or continue down, take this low out. Um, the sell was a break even. 
Now the buy, uh, my ideal area to get in would have been here under this lit zone. Uh, let's the liquidity induced trap. Um, for those of you that are kind of newer to the concepts, the concept is our order transfer zones, the last sell range. So it's the last set of sell candles that put in the lowest point, which would be up here. And I want to see a body break through it. So wicks don't count. So here we get a body break. Um, you would say this is lit. However, um, on the 15 minute my lit's here. And the reason I'm choosing the 15 minute lit over the five lit, if we actually take a look at what the market left us is a set of equals. And I was actually counting on the market taking these out before I would be willing to buy. Um, unfortunately, that didn't happen. So let's just play this through. Um, so price actually once again creates momentum candles and we smash through another order transfer zone. So again, we picked the highest point that put in the lowest point. We got a body break here. Here's our liquidity induced trap. So these are kind of our two areas of interest. Uh, my nearest target from a daily perspective is the one hour induced high. So now we have two zones we're interested in. Um, best case scenario, I take out these equals. That's my lit. Um, I look for a buy. Um, we're always looking to take out liquidity before we enter with our system. So again, here, you can, you can kind of see we stack this liquidity. Um, we didn't take it all out. So here you could see the stacked liquidity and we took some of it out. Um, we didn't finish the job. I was hoping this would get taken out. It didn't. So even though this setup here is a little bit lower probability, um, price doesn't have to come back. Both of these zones are valid. Again, you can see our stacked liquidity and it also lines up with our lit zone. Um, it lines up with the overall daily bias with what we hit on the daily and the monthly. So ultimately, my first TP would be here at the induced high, which is all I took the trade to. The second TP would be up here. I think the daily high is here actually. So that would be the second TP, which would be the nearest daily internal liquidity. Um, so if we break this down a little further, you guys can see this candle comes down. Um, only at this point am I willing to go down in time frames. Um, I don't really sit on the one minute when it comes to bias. It's more of an execution trigger for me. Um, now, I like to see either multiple momentum candles in a row. Um, so this wouldn't be it. I'd like to see three or more. So the next thing that I would look for if I don't get that is a pullback and a break followed by. So this to me would be an execution trigger. Um, some of you may choose to get in sooner. Um, I find waiting's kind of done, done me a lot of wonders in this case. Um, I don't believe I had to cover that much. I think my invalidation point from the one minute perspective was here. So if we break down where the five minute aligned with one, technically, if this trade is to hold true, we should not invalidate this point. Uh, this is where the momentum candle started. If we come down further, uh, further, I would invalidate this trade idea and I would ultimately just look for another trade. Now price takes off pretty quick. Um, then it kind of goes out of session. So price goes really slow. It takes its time to get the TP. However, um, the target itself doesn't change. And once this high is broken, you can move your stops to break even. Um, again, if price doesn't take this high out and it wants to come down, um, it either needs more liquidity or it's not ready to go up yet. But we don't control the outcome. We just control where we get in and where we break even. So ultimately this hits TP in Asia. So I think it was about a six hour trade or something, but uh, this trade yielded about 3.3 R. I think I actually had 3.4. So my stop might've been a little bit smaller. Um, but the point is this is very systematic. Um, this is in line with the, the overall bias. Uh, this is TP one. 
Um, TP2 would have been holding it to this high, but uh, I mostly day trade. I rarely hold swing positions, so this was kind of my trade for the day. Um, had we gotten in where we wanted to, which was down here, uh, depending how the execution trigger looked and how much we had to cover, this could have possibly yielded, you know, maybe a 5R. But unfortunately, the market did not do that that day. So we just take what the market gives us. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe. I will be doing many more breakdowns in the near future. Have a great day, guys.